Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to be making some spooky Halloween journals using beautiful printables yet again from Bontic Vintage Designs. Now I know what you are probably thinking, Grace, it's like a few days before Halloween when you were publishing this, are we not cutting it a bit close? And yes, you, you, you would be right, but I'm not going to go into stuff, but life just keeps lifing at me, you know? But I love Halloween, I love creepy spooky things, and... I still wanted to make these, and even if nobody wants them and I keep them on a shelf forever for me, that's totally fine. But I thought I would share with you anyway, because I love these printables, I love playing with them, and I love making journals, especially spooky ones. Now, if you saw my last journal making video, which was the autumn journals, again using Bontic Vintage uh, printables, then these are made in quite a similar way, so I don't know how much I need to go into detail about how I made them, because it's very similar to the previous video, but there are a few changes here and there. Um, the covers I decided to do ever so slightly differently. So the first part is exactly the same. I'm cutting a 12 by 12 to about 10 and a quarter, maybe just over inches wide. I do not cut on the length. Um, I score on the length where it's about mm, eight and a quarter, I want to say inches, and then I fold that in on itself to create a little pocket in the cover. Um, but I am going to do something slightly different with these in that I wanted to add some pretty fabric because I had some Halloween-y stuff that I bought last year, maybe the year before, I don't know, I'd never really had a chance to use, I've used it a bit here and there in my own journals, but I had loads of it and I wanted to use it in these. So each journal cover, the inside of it is going to be this lovely glittery spiderweb black and gold tool or mesh kind of thing and then on the front of each I have a picture or a motif that I've printed off that matches each of the printable sets. I'm going to back that with a fabric that I think works best, either a black lace or a black mesh or something like that. So yeah, the journal covers are similar to last time but also a little bit different. The printable kits that I'm using for each journal are Vintage Halloween, uh, vintage Witch, Enchanting Spooks, and Halloween Frame. But I always call them something different, each journal, when it's finished to list it in my shop, just so it's being a bit different and I'm not like st stealing Anton's names for his own products. So they will be called something different at the end, but I'll try and refer to them as you see them on screen by their kit name. Obviously each kit will be linked in the description as well as a discount code that you can use. The covers themselves though, those are not made from the printables, um, just like with the autumn journals, I happen to have bought a paper pad that I really, really wanted to use, and also because I can only print absolute max size in A4, it can be a little hard for me to make covers out of printables sometimes, unless I have a base to put them on. So that's why I'm doing like a really large kind of motif, so you still have the theme of the journal, but I'm also bringing in those other designs. It was a Halloween themed paper pad, from the range where they had a period of not having very good paper pads for a while, but they're bringing them back now. So all my UK peeps who love the range, the good paper pads are coming back. And it might be Ireland as well, the, the range is, I'm not sure. Then of course, with everything prepped and cut for the covers, we go over to the sewing machine where I know the lighting isn't wonderful. It's in a darkish corner of my studio. I really need to get a lamp or something in that corner. But the process was as follows. Stitch the motif uh, onto its fabric backing, then stitch that onto the cover, making sure the pocket flap at the bottom is open, because otherwise you would just stitch that pocket closed and that would be a whole load of pointless. Then on the inside, layer up my lovely glitter fabric and then stitch that. But this was the tricky bit because you want the nice side of the stitching, as it were, on the outside of the journal. So I had to put the fabric down kind of clip it in place and then stitch around it like so. And of course I am using a black thread for all the stitching in these journals because they're Halloween, obviously. But I also have white thread down in my bobbin as well, but then you get that black and white mix that works really well for Halloween as well. Then once I've done that inside part, stitch that part of the fabric on, I kind of very roughly cut around the edges. So the fabric is sticking out slightly from underneath the inside of the journal, but not loads. But it gives it that nice kind of rough vintage rustic feel to have a little bit of it sticking out and then it's just the same process over again really as ever with these videos I do one thing then I do it three four however many journal times after that so um 
some journals I did differently in that some I would do multi layers of stitching. So like one of them has three layers of stitching sort of weaving in and out of each other around um, around the outside of the journal and others don't. I just went with what I thought looked best at the time. Then with all the covers stitched and ready, it's back over to the other side of the room to my other workspace to work on the signatures, which is one of my favourite parts of doing this. I say this every time, but just working out what order the pages are going to go, um, which, you know, what two colours work really nicely together, what papers are going to work to have a pocket stitched into them and what which are not to make sure they're like evenly spaced out. When I'm working with principles like this, the first thing I do is decide which one I'm going to use as the sort of the centerfold piece, so the one that you're going to see the whole design of. Decide on that, put that one aside. Also then decide which one looks best for the inside and outside cover that works best with the colours of the cover. So that one goes aside as well. And then I just go through and fold them and decide and say what's going where. And I try to space out the printables to the other pages I've included. These journals have slightly more printables in than the autumn ones did, just because I had a lot of trouble finding vintage book pages and stuff that had appropriate Halloween stuff on. Um, I found a couple of things that was from a book about the Brontes, which had a graveyard scene. I was like, right, yep, we're going to use that. Um, and I found some old magazine pages that had sort of like these creepy faces on and stuff which I'm using in one of the, the most colourful journal and then I also found one oh it had loads of caves on well, well caves are spooky caves frighten the heck out of me so we'll use that one as well and then some black paper some mulberry paper a vintage ledger and probably something else that I'm forgetting oh and of course my beloved printed vellum there is two of those in each journal which has been printed with something from the kit so it matches this one i'm working on here is the vintage witch one which i've got it written down somewhere which i'm naming it in my shop but it'll have witch in it somewhere but you can see the way i'm putting that down there i was like thinking i had some pages with bats on and then i had the cave page i think cave bats those go together so we're going to put those together oh there's the page I've forgotten about. Um, I had this, I have this really large book in German, but it's got that really beautiful Gothic font throughout. So I don't know what it says. I mean, I speak a little bit of German, so I could probably make an effort to get a couple of words, but I'm not saying German is spooky, just the lovely Gothic writing is. So this journal here is using the Enchanting Spooks kit. That was the one that had the kind of creepy faces I found for the magazine. This is probably the creepiest of the journals, but it's also the most colourful. So it's really good for like the more mixed media orientated people, maybe. Um, next, I need to cut up all of the ephemera that I've printed off. I did something a little bit different this time. So I did two pages per journal on white, which is also backed, uh, double-sided. So there's a lovely pattern on the back of each ephemera piece. And then I also printed off one per journal on craft, just to be a bit different, to see how it worked. And I really love the way this printed. It looks so nice. I am obsessed. So there's probably gonna be a whole lot more of this in the future because I love it so much. And just in case for anyone thinking, my goodness, that's a lot of cardboard waste there. I put it in my little box and it will get shredded up and turned into my handmade recycled paper. Nothing gets wasted in my studio. Well, virtually nothing. So with everything cut out, obviously that takes quite some time. I'm going to go through each kit, each set and decide which ones are going to be ephemera pieces within the journal that can be pulled out and which I'm going to turn into pockets and tuck spots. Now. I have two different kind of ways of doing it this time. So four journals, two of them have fewer pockets and fewer ephemera pieces for the people who, you know, are more inclined to have fewer pockets and fewer things to work with like that. And then two have loads of pockets and loads of ephemera pieces for those who like all of the things. So, you know, hopefully catering to different styles and whatnot. And then I thought, actually, I don't have quite the way where I've cut not so many pieces or I didn't print so many pieces um I'm just going to add a few little bits of paper so I can make more pockets those paper pads I use for that are from my personal stash I don't love using my personal stash stuff in the journals I make to sell because it makes it complicated on working out prices and stuff but when it's just a couple of one-off bits like that it doesn't matter so much and then we come back to the sewing machine and 
half an hour ish per journal of me going oh I really must figure out a better way to sit at the sewing machine I'm so uncomfortable with and I still haven't found it yet I think maybe I just need to buy a new chair quite frankly but anyway here it is where I stitch in all the pockets I also decided to add an envelope to each signature where I can make that into lots of extra pockets and pages and things so it's just a system of going through the pages working out where will a pocket work where will it look good where is it not gonna cover up something that looks really cool how does it work within the journal and going from there really I don't really plan it out I just take it one page at a time and work it out from there I have just noticed something that's on on screen right now which could give a really bad impression and I've just i am just I can't believe that's there Um, if you see where I've got those large spools of white there is a little red thing underneath and that is a stamp with the face of a very bad person on it <laughs> um so because I have all these vintage and antique stamps that I sell in kits and things I go through them and there is you will find stamps from Germany between 1930 and 1945 let's say with a certain figure on and obviously I don't want to put those in kits because obviously so he, they get chucked quite frankly they get thrown away I don't know what else to do with them but one seems to have made its way there so uh just 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 to be clear that's that's an accident and I am gonna go throw them away now oh and there we go at least two hours of stitching condensed into two minutes Next it's time to bind the signatures. Again, I never know how much to say because I've shared these videos before. Only a couple of weeks ago I was doing a very similar thing. So how much do I need to explain? But then again, someone might be brand new to the channel and watching this. So I don't know how much to say about what I'm doing. But book binding cradle, measure holes, punch holes. I always, before I stitch, I check that all the pages are facing the right way because I have been burned before so I always double triple make sure they're all facing the right way I punch the cover separately so I punch the holes through the signature first then I attach the cover and punch there it just means it it leaves less room for error basically that's that's why I do it I also decided with these ones to start the saddle stitch right at the top so it meant that when where I made the tie when the saddle stitch was finished, it was right at the top of the page. So the lovely image that takes up the center fold, there's not a big bow right in the middle of it. And I just just trying something out really. And what I was doing there, there was one little page that was just sticking out ever so slightly too far out of the cover. So little little sneaky little trim, so it wasn't doing that anymore. My beloved book binding cradle needed some more masking tape to keep it together. Um, a lot of book binding cradles you buy have um, like the holes pre-drilled into them, which I, it just doesn't work for me because you have to be a little bit more precise in your measuring that way. With this way, again, room for error. I always like to make room for error. And I just, it's freer basically than the pre-drilled -pre ones, but you know, you whatever you prefer really but everything stitched again I just I cut a lot of it out because I'm just doing the same thing over and over again now I'm adding my signature ribbon binding had a problem with these though because I was so sure that I had some black satin ribbon I was so sure could I find it no and then I realized but I do have two navy so what I must have done was I thought that it was black in the store and I don't know the lighting of the shop or whatever I don't know but I didn't buy a black one I've now got two navy ones so had to do a bit of searching to find some ribbon that would work so I found just enough to do one purple which went nicely on the witch themed journal um, I found some of this vintage lace which I've cut a strip out of to do on the black cat and pumpkin journal which is created with Halloween frame kit um, this one's a little bit different as well because usually I have satin ribbon and this is more lace and it's a bit more vintagey antique looking. And then for the final two I found this very very thick black ribbon. I have no idea where it came from, I just found it in my box of pieces of ribbon so that one worked well. It was like, it has a slightly more modern look maybe which worked for the last two journals? I don't know, something like that. Next stage is to sort out all of these little ephemera pieces that I have cut out. So 
where there are tags, I will punch holes and add twine. Where there are, where they look like they could work with it, I add maybe a little bit of ribbon or lace. But around each and every one of them, I distress them with a colour that I think works with Distress Oxide. I think here I am using, oh, I can't remember the name of it, the, the darkest brown, I think, of the Distress Oxide colours. Ground Espresso, that's what it's called. And I didn't talk about it when I was making the covers, but each cover has a colour distressed around the edge as well. So the colour is matched to the cover that's on the ephemera. Um, I had a few little scraps of that spidey webby fabric, so I've used that for some of the tags, some of the leftover bits of the lace I used for backing on the covers, you know, all those bits and bobs that are left over, plus twine, plus things like that, just to make it more interesting, make sure I've done something to each piece, even if it's as simple as distressing the edge of it. One thing I did differently with these is usually when I make the tags, I add a hole reinforcer to where the punch out is, but it just, I don't know, it didn't look right when I was making these. I can't explain why it just didn't, so I just distressed around the hole instead. I think I also figured out at this point that it's much easier to add the colour to every piece first, and then go through and punch all the holes, and then go through and add all the twine. I was doing it one by one with the first set, and I just, I don't know why I did that, but... Um, Obviously the first two took much longer because these are for the journals that have lots of little pieces and the next two took much less time because they had much larger pieces. Um, and then once all of that is done, it is time to fill the pockets, which I love doing so much. I can't explain why, I just I really, really enjoy it. And like when I work with the pages and try and make sure things kind of work together I do the same with the ephemera that I'm putting in the pockets trying to make sure it works with the page that it's on obviously for the person that hopefully one day uses this journal they don't have to do that but just for the presentation I do it that way oh and in the back pocket of each journal I decided to add one of my own Halloween sticker sheets from my shop I do apologize for being slightly off screen at the moment, I don't, I, I don't have an excuse. I clearly just didn't set up the camera properly or didn't remember where I put it. But anyway, while I do this stage, I am also making note of how many pieces of ephemera there are, how many pockets, and how many pages to put in the Etsy description as well. So it's all done at once, and I don't have to go back and sit down and go through each one of them separately. So as I say, this bit's just so much fun for me. I love it. I love it so much. One part of the process I haven't shown though is um, staging and taking and editing all the photos for the listing as well because to be completely honest I haven't done it yet at the time of recording. <laughs> so I'm going to do that while the video renders. See? See? I'm trying to I'm multitasking. Anyways, here they are, finished journals. It is flip through time. Yay, flip through time. So journal number one. This is, let me find my notes. This is created with enchanting spooks. I'm calling it colourful and creepy. This is the one I was talking about, which is like, it is quite creepy, but it's very bright and colourful and it's great for like, has that mixed media vibe. It has uh, 30 slash 60 pages by 30 60, I mean like 30 individual 60 sides, eight pockets, 13 various pieces of larger ephemera plus one sticker sheet and it has the thick black ribbon around the edge of it as well. As with all journals though, the ribbon has been put in in a way that it is removable, so you can remove it if you don't like it or add your own or anything like that. Like it's not absolutely set in place, it's not glued or anything like that. But yes, this this journal is a lot of fun, I feel. Like there's a lot, there's a mystical things, spooky things, yeah, quite a lot going on. This one is created with the Halloween frame kit. I'm calling it something like Scary Cats and Pumpkins. I'm not entirely sure. I used to be really funny about black cats and Halloween because I am owned by a black cat and I hate the idea that, you know, people are extra cautious about black cats at Halloween. But at the end of the day, he is a creepy boy. So kind of embracing it with the caveat that black cats are awesome and everyone should be wonderful to them. Um, this one is the same, it is a 30, 60, 30 pages, 60 sides, but this has much, much more, that's not correct, more <laughs> pockets and ephemera, so it's 11 pockets, 28 slightly smaller ephemera pieces, and this is the one that has the lace binding up the side, but again, easily removable if you don't like it. 
as well as the cats and the pumpkins this one has kind of a vintagey vibe to it and there's also sort of like this scary village theme going on throughout as well so it's a lot of things going on um if you look if you look at each page separately and go oh yeah look at there's like a little house and this little yeah it, i enjoyed looking through them anyway uh after that i can't remember oh this one this is cute and spooky created with the vintage halloween kit uh again it's a 30 60 30 pages 60 sides situation it's got the thick black ribbon and this is one of the ones with the fewer pockets but larger pieces of ephemera so i think it's exactly the same it's got the eight pockets 13 piece ephemera plus the sticker sheet the halloween sticker sheet i really love the little ghost in this one that appears a couple of times i think he is so so cute and he really reminds me of that trend you know the uh the ghost photo shoot trend that people do with their pets or themselves or whatever if you've seen it on tiktok or instagram you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but i think he's so cute um but i've just it's just occurred to me going through this journal that every single journal has a cat in it somewhere some have more than others but every single one has a cat i didn't do that on purpose but it is it's quite fitting given how much i love cats so there you go this one I would say is kind of the least scary, the more fun and cute one of the four journals. Um, so next up is using the Vintage Witch Kit. This is, I'm going to call it something like Halloween Mystical Witches or something. Because I've really tried to go up play on that sort of mystical magic vibe. So this one has 28 pages or 56 sides. It has the purple satin ribbon down the spine. It has 10 pockets and 26 pieces of ephemera, plus, of course, the sticker sheet. Uh, this one, yeah, I think it has quite autumnal elements in it as well, like some of the colours. It also has my favourite of the uh, that the centre folds or whatever you want to call them, the, the middle part of the signature, which is this lovely, like, apothecary witch's cottage i don't know i just think it's absolutely gorgeous you saw it just there but once this one is done that is it that is the four journals and the making of thank you so so very much for watching if you're interested in the printables of course they will be linked again with my discount code that you can use and the journals themselves will be listed on etsy and i will link those too again i know we are so close to halloween but i'm just kind of hoping there's enough people out there who are like me and kind of like spooky stuff year round that's that's what i'm hoping for and if not well i had a good time making them so um i've already said thank you i'll say it again please leave me a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed the video subscribe if you haven't already chat to me down in the comments and yes i am making christmas journals this year they are already in the works i'm not going to have them ready on like the 20th of december they are coming very 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 soon so keep an eye out for those if you are interested because they sold out very very quickly last year but no okay yes shutting up i'm going thank you so much again Bye bye